If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving on. Our first step in solving the question will be to draw a picture. In this case, the picture is relatively basic. We have one wire hovering above another, and the top wire carries a current of 30 amps, and the bottom wire carries a current of 60 amps. We've labeled those currents I2 and I1, respectively. We can come over on the side and draw a free body diagram of the top wire, and it turns out that there are two forces acting on the top wire. There is the weight force, which is directed downward, and then there is this magnetic force, which is directed upward. We've learned in this chapter that when you have two long parallel wires, both of which carry current, there's going to be a magnetic force acting between them. In this case, we need that magnetic force to be pointing upward so that it can balance with the downward weight force. And indeed, because the wire is in equilibrium, these two forces are equal in magnitude to one another. And since the question gave us the weight per unit length of 0.08 newtons per meter, that means that this value for the magnetic force is also 0.08 newtons per meter. And now that we have that value, we can turn to the equation that relates the magnetic force between these two wires. Now, we are ultimately looking for the distance of separation between the wires, and so that's going to be d. We need to solve this equation for d, therefore. And we can begin to do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2 pi d. That way it will cancel out on the right-hand side of the equation. We will then divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi. And then finally, since we have a multiplication between d and this f divided by l, we're going to treat this as just a single term, and we'll divide both sides of the equation by that f divided by l. Now, it might look a little strange the way that we write it on the right side. It's going to cancel here on the left side. But you can actually just imagine that f divided by l to be in the denominator of this fraction. So maybe we should write it right there. And now at this point, we just have to plug in all the known values. Remember that this constant mu has a value of 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And when you compute that, you should get approximately 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3, and the unit will be in meters. If you needed to convert that into millimeters, you can just remember that 1 meter is 1,000 millimeters. And so if we made that conversion, we would get approximately 4.5 millimeters. So either this answer or this answer should be acceptable. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it on YouTube.